I'm in the mountains of Virginia. And we're in the mountains of Scotland. Hi, I'm Kennedy. And I'm Abby. And you know what's crazy? These are the same rocks that we see in the Appalachian Mountains in Kentucky. They were formed at the same time and by the same tectonic forces. So how did these mountains get separated by over 5,000 miles of ocean? Shenandoah National Park protects more than 300 square miles of the Blue Ridge Mountains. They're part of the Appalachian Mountains that run up and down the eastern United States from Georgia to Maine to Scotland? How's that possible? The Earth's crust is broken up into pieces called tectonic plates. And just below the crust is the mantle, the sticky layer of molten rock that moves and flows a bit like honey. But there's a pattern to its movement. The molten rock rises as it's heated near the core, only to sink again as it cools, creating a circular current called a convection current. These convection currents cause the plates above them to move around. You can imagine pool toys floating in water and moving around with the currents. It's basically the same thing. Scientists call the moving of tectonic plates across the Earth's surface continental drift. Continental drift happens pretty slowly. The plates only move a couple of inches a year, so it's really hard to see or even measure in the course of a human lifetime. But give them a couple hundred million years, those plates really get around. Around 400 million years ago, the tectonic plates of Africa, North America, and Europe began to collide, creating the original Appalachian Mountains. At their peak, they were likely as high and as dramatic as the Himalayas. It was this convergence of three tectonic plates that created a mountain chain across three different continents, Eastern North America, Northern Africa, and Northern Europe. They're geologic triplets. But after a couple hundred million years, the currents in the mantle changed and the continents began to break apart. I guess it's hard to be together for that long. Heck, the Beatles barely made it through the 60s. So how do we know any of this? How do we know that the mountains just weren't created at the same time? What's our evidence for continental drift? We came to the Loch Auburn Geopark and talked to the director, Ian Parsons, to find out. Now, these rocks are about 500 million years old. So how exactly can we tell how they were once connected to the Appalachian Mountains that we see in the United States? By matching up the rock types and their chemistry and the way they're folded and deformed. So we can be really confident they're all part of this one mountain range, which not only goes down the east coast of North America, but it goes northwards right to the northern tip of Greenland. Wow. In the Caledonides, as we call them, which was the name given to them by the Romans. Ian, we all know the three basic rock types, igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. What kind are we mostly seeing around here? Well, those mostly, this is almost all igneous rock. Uh, and this, the bottom of this cliff here uh, are what the things called geological sills. They've inject, been injected flowing across the ground in, with, on sandy layers, with sandy layers behind them. But the very top of this cliff, above the grassy bit, that, those are lava flows, and, and they were most. Some of them were deposited uh, from volcanic ash clouds and so on. Th these are actually about 420 million years old. This caldera formed, mm -hmm. and I mean the extraordinary thing about uh, Glencoe is where, where active calderas are known all over the earth. This was the first ancient one recognised in this geological record by the early mappers. Uh, so it was quite a discovery to be able, they interpreted this as a caldera quite co correctly, but it was a completely new concept, a historical caldera. So these mountains, though they're 5,000 miles apart, they were formed by the same tectonic forces and they show physical evidence of continental drift. So yeah. Ian, thank you so much for talking with us today. Thank you. Okay. Back to you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Every day of every year for the last 200 million years, the North American and Eurasian tectonic plates have been moving away from each other. How do we know? 
In the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, along the seafloor, runs a ridge that we've cleverly named the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. As you move away from the ridge, the rocks get progressively older. Think that's weird? So did geologist Harry Hess. Before Hess came along, continental drift was a fringe theory for kooks. Then Hess noticed this strange pattern in the rocks. Turns out, that's where tectonic plates are moving apart. As the plates separate, magma comes up from the mantle, cools, and new crust is formed. It's awesome because we can see new crust being formed in real time, and evidence for continental drift. Earth's surface is constantly changing, and continental drift is a big part of that. The tectonic plates continue to move today. Who knows where they'll end up in 100 million years? But it will be the same geologic processes driving their motion. Convection currents in the mantle forcing the tectonic plates to move around, bumping into, sliding past, or moving away from each other. It's how we get mountains and ocean ridges and a ton of other amazing features on Earth. Well, that's our show. Thanks for watching. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some uh, metamorphic strata to analyze. We'll see you next time on Outside a Classroom. Want to learn more about our national parks? Then hit that subscribe button, friend. Stay up to date and catch bonus features by following us on Instagram, at Outsider.